Hello people, welcome to my engine. Thanks very much for joining me. We're at Fullbeck for round one of the GX UK uh, Championship. First uh, year in this series. We've got a reverse mounted camera uh, and also a uh, front mounted camera. So a bit of a different one uh, today. We're right behind Andy Hicks, the 28 of Andy Hicks. And just there behind us, Brad Philpott from fifth on the grid has just made his way up to third position. So good start from him. We're just gonna swing it round back. Uh, to Andy Hicks, we're, we started second uh, and we're up to third. Poor old Rich Melton Baxter on the outside of turn one. It's not really the place to be. He's lost a load of positions off the start. Um, and at this stage of the race, I'm feeling quite comfortable. We've only done half a lap. I'm feeling quite comfortable staying with Andy, but here, Brad goes for the move, just locks his rear wheels. Um, I'm gonna wave my hands around as we um, skip back to the, uh, the nose cone camera. Um, and uh, yeah, a bit of an unfortunate one that. It's cost us a place, but never mind. We're gonna keep going. The two guys in front of us are um, undoubtedly the, uh, the, the favourites for the championship this year. And now we've got an uninterrupted view of the battle between uh, the pair of them. And we're going to do our best as we close up on the brakes uh, to try and join this battle. So um, as we're going to skip back now, it's going to have a little look behind us. There we are. Uh, there's Rich Melton Baxter in fourth position. Like I say, he started second, but um, having to go around that, uh, that, that long hairpin at the top um, is, uh, is is on the outside is not it's not easy. Um, we're actually really fortunate. We started almost all of our uh, our positions uh, in the heats in the final on the inside, so that uh, that bodes very well for us. Um, anyway, um, uninterrupted view, and I'm I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about um, about GX UK um, and about my expectations and about how I've come into this series because um, the uh, the uh, we're going to basically the, the top three three of us so we're going to edge away from the rest of the field um, and we're going to have a really really nice view of the battle between Andy and, and Brad but uh, but yeah GX UK relatively new series uh, in fact it only started last year um, using um, proper bona fide um, uh, uh, karting uh, professional kart chassis I'm running a, a 2012 Tony kart chassis here it feels amazing um, it's got a, a GX UK um, uh, 200 uh, sorry GX UK sorry GX 200 engine strapped to the side of it so it's not making a huge amount of power uh, but it's a very high grip low power uh, formula to, to be involved in and um, you're gonna see particularly with regard to, uh, to Brad and Andy ahead, and also the battles that we get into uh, in heats two, three in the final. You're gonna see some absolutely amazing racing, so please do stick with it. Please do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, really helps me and stays, uh, keeps me motivated and, and everything like that. Um, but yeah, so um, this is my first ever uh, trip to own a car driving. And um, uh, uh, I'm doing all the maintenance, all the mechanics on, on my own and everything like that. So loads and loads to learn, but that's really why I wanted to do it. And if you're looking at this, if you're watching this now, um, thinking, you know, I've done, I've done team sport, I've done Daytona, I've done Club 100. That's the sort of um, route I took up. Um, and now you really want to get involved in some owner car driving. This is absolutely the best possible place uh, to be because uh, yeah, the, the carts are, are, are as simple as it, as it possibly can be uh, to start off with your, your own driving um, career. Uh, they, they feel amazing, they're, they're light, um, you know, with, with one engine and, uh, and, and sort of no, uh, no big uh, you know, child-proof bumper that you get in, um, in some of the other, uh, the other series. Um, they're, they're light, so they feel amazing. These uh, these cars feel amazing to drive. We've just skipped forward a couple of laps because nothing really happened. Um, you can see um, there that uh, uh, Brad is still behind Andy. I'm still behind the pair of them. Now, uh, sorry, uh, uh, we've got a driver off in the in the gravel there. Um, so um, I think that is. Matthew Roberts who has uh, lost a wheel and he's ended up in the gravel there so there's going to be yellow flags. There's actually only a couple of minutes, uh, a couple of laps left uh, of this heat. Brad's still behind Andy, a really really fierce battle going on there. I think Andy's kind of hoping that I could hurry up a little bit and give Brad something to think about behind. At the moment um, I'm not far enough um, uh, behind Brad to, to worry him. We have lost the toe as well, which is annoying. It's quite a high speed track, this one, particularly here, you get a really good toe. As we enter the final lap, Andy going defensive. Um, I've lost the toe. These guys are battling really, really hard. 
Um, and um, but yeah, just um, as uh, as we're going to watch a, a really good final final lap, there's uh, there's a stricken cart that's not going to be cleared away. So that's a, a position that that's no longer available to to overtake. Um, we've got, as you can see, back markers just ahead. Um, so um, yeah, really, really uh, kind of difficult position to be in, I suppose, uh, particularly for for Andy Hicks. Brad's going to try and do whatever he can. Uh, Brad goes for the move up the inside on Andy. Andy hangs it all the way around the outside. Uh, there they are. They're both together. The back mark is going to do his best to stay out of the way, but he can't quite manage it. And Brad just gets all crossed up on the curb. And now we are right on Brad's tail. Brad's aware that we're there. Can we go left, right? And we... Just have a moment of indecision and actually tap the back of Brad there. Um, we did actually get the fastest lap in that race, um, which I'm really, really pleased with. Um, we lost the toe, but of course Andy and Brad um, were, uh, were battling, so they could, could have perhaps had a, a little bit more, more time in hand. So anyway, that's a P3 in Heat 1. Pretty good. Started P3 though, so it didn't go up any further. Started behind Andy Hicks in P16 in Heat 2. And just watch this. Andy... Where he pulls a wheelie over the back of uh, Rich Mountain Baxter there, uh, but it's all good. Uh, we we all live to fight another day, um, and um, we have perhaps gone up one position. I think there was uh, there was someone just to my my left, and I got the benefit of um, of being up the inside. This this heat's not going to be as easy as the last heat. Uh, basically, the the top two, Andy um, and Brad, um, they, uh, they they were sort of you know a, a little bit ahead of me. Um, and then there was quite a big gap behind whilst everyone else was having a massive fight, slowing each other down. Andy gets really poor drive on the um, on my right, and I do manage to get past him, actually. That's an important move to make, because as we can see from Heat 1, Andy uh, is one of the, uh, Andy Hicks, one of the, the if not the fastest driver, um, yeah, along with, uh, with Brad Philpott. Um, number 69 ahead of us. We're going to go for a lunge up the inside. We lock the rears and um, we don't make contact actually, but we were close. Um, and uh, we do actually manage to get some quite good drive. And, uh, and up the inside, there's not really a huge breaking point here, but if you have track position, then um, you've got the job done. We leave a little bit of space on the left-hand side, um, so we don't um, we don't send him off into the grass. But that is going to be job done, and, and we're able to take our um, our preferred line into the hairpin. Now, I didn't strap the um, I didn't strap the, uh, the the 360 cam on for this one because we're starting almost last. So um, yeah, hopefully we're going to be looking forward. Uh, or, well, actually, hopefully, if we're looking back, that means I'm in the lead, doesn't it? But uh, uh, in, all, in all likelihood, we're going to spend most of our time looking forward uh, in this one. We've um, we've got up to the back of Rich Melton Baxter. We've got Alex Van Geen ahead um, of him. Uh, we've got Tom Purchase ahead, and then we've got Lee Lee Jones, George Massey, Tom Stalker, uh, and we're going to have a little look up the inside of Rich, but we're not alongside. Uh, we're not far enough alongside, at least. And, um, and and Rich, Rich is driving this Gillard um, here. As we again have another look up the inside, Rich holds it all the way around the outside. Um, I really like, actually, sorry, I'm going to talk about Rich's Gillard in a minute. But um, uh, this this nose cone cap. Um, it's mounted on the on the top of my NASU panel, but it really demonstrates how, um, how how close the racing is, doesn't it? You know, so <laughs> a number of times it looks like I'm almost kind of like halfway alongside the driver. I'm I'm not actually, but uh, but it does really demonstrate how close the battling is in this series. It's it's amazing. I absolutely love it. I know that the power is not not huge, but you know the this heat and um, and the heat afterwards and the final actually um, really really nicely demonstrates. How um, how competitive this field is, and, and how uh, how the racing is absolutely brilliant. We're right in Rich's slipstream, but Rich has got Alex Vangin's slipstream as well, so uh, nothing that we can do there. And um, as uh, as Rich uh, defends the the inside line again, not much we can do. We can try and send it on the brakes on the inside, but Rich is going to hang it all the way around the outside. He does exactly the right thing, and he gets a slingshot on the way out. So yeah, very very difficult to overtake here. Um, we're in, we're basically in one big DRS train, aren't we? Uh, everyone punching a hole for the driver in front. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's not going to be easy to overtake. Uh, we're going to have a little look up the inside of Rich. Um, and we had to climb all over the kerb. And actually, as we hit that kerb so hard, my, uh, my, my foot um, dropped off the accelerator. Um, and, uh, and we lose loads and loads of time, don't we? Andy Hicks right behind us now. And, uh, and, and yeah, lucky, lucky not to have lost a position there. I think Andy actually might have bumped into the back of us because um, 
uh, and, and ruined his drive because of course we uh, yeah he wouldn't have been expecting uh, me not to accelerate out of that out of that corner and just there Rich um, gets a massive snap of oversteer and that's going to give us the opportunity we need. Um, Rupert Ricks on the outside is sent off onto the grass. So after after making a mistake of the hairpin and um, and and, uh, and and giving up quite a lot of time, we've had a great start to this lap. We've gone up two positions, perhaps two positions that we didn't really deserve. Uh, Rich had that horrible snap of oversteer and, and Rupert off on the grass, uh, but we'll take it. You know, like, I, I think you can see already, it's not a particularly easy track to overtake on, and the, the standard. Uh, of driving is, is very, very high. Next up, Alex Van Geen and Tom Purchase. Uh, what can we make of, of these chaps? Alex just hits that curb um, there, and, uh, and it, I'd say it unsettles the cart slightly. Um, we're gonna try and get in the slipstream. You can see we're inching closer, closer, closer. It's not gonna be close enough though. Um, and uh, all we can do is try and push uh, as, as hard as we can in the corners. We perhaps pushed a little bit too far there. We don't get a particularly good exit. We're gonna go for the cutback here. And Alex, uh, all the way on top of that curb, we're gonna go for the inside line, uh, but uh, it doesn't quite work out. Tom Purchase going defensive into the chicane. Can we do anything? Can we get a better exit? We're gonna go for the better exit. George Massey's uh, gapped the three of us, although there's four or five of us here actually battling. Uh, we're gonna go for the outside line again, trying to go for the better exit. We'll just get a snap of oversteer there. That ruins things for us. That's an unfortunate one. Uh, not really any way through the bootleg. Uh, and actually just there, we tap the back of Alex. Tap the back of Alex Van Geen, and that's a bad mistake to make because that, delays us massively and Andy, and Andy Hicks has gone through. Someone's copped a penalty. Uh, Andy Hicks has gone through there and Andy is not gonna make those sorts of mistakes. Uh, he's gonna be a very difficult guy to overtake. Um, we saw his quality in, in heat one, didn't we? Um, as Alex goes defensive there, Andy goes for the switchback and Alex hits that curb really, really hard and it ruins his momentum. So we're gonna tuck in behind Andy. We're pushing him through now. We're bump drafting him. He gives us the thumbs up and I push Andy through. I give a little space on the inside so that Alex has got some space to race with. But uh, we push Andy through because I could see that Alex's momentum was uh, was ruined by hitting that curb just a little bit too hard. I'm feeling the need to go a little bit defensive here as well. So Alex is still there right behind me. Um, but that, uh, that was uh, another important move to make. And uh, it's, uh, I think in, in this, this heat, starting so close to the, the back and, um, uh, and, and in a track which, which isn't the easiest to overtake on, it's about trying to sort of harry your, uh, your, your competitors into making a mistake. You're gonna, you, yeah, you, unless you're an absolute weapon, uh, or unless you're driving against someone who's uh, who's perhaps a little bit less experienced, it's unlikely you're gonna do something on the brakes. Um, Andy goes uh, for the cutback, and he gets a great drive um, side by side with Tom Purchase. Can we make our way through as well? No, we can't. Uh, Tom just about gets to the apex first, and that's annoying for us uh, because uh, um, yeah, Andy is is potentially going to disappear off now, and uh, ideally, I wanted to follow. Andy as closely as possible and try and, and make some progress with him throughout the field. Knowing that he's so quick, uh, it would have been good to try and stick in his slipstream. But uh, at the moment, unless I'm able to make uh, a move on Tom Purchase ahead of us immediately, it's going to be very, very difficult to do that. Uh, and you see Andy is already just beginning to go up the road a little bit uh, as we enter uh, chicane number one. We've got Simon Fuller, uh, who's just up ahead of us as well. I think Simon had um, a bit of an issue here. And uh, Simon goes uh, back and, and Tom and Simon just get together. We're able to make our way through as well. I think Simon might have ended up on the grass there. Um, we're going side by side with Tom Purchase. We hit that curb really hard and Tom again just gets to the apex first. So uh, really, really, uh, really, really tough racing, really, really fair racing. I'm loving this battle, but I'd love it even more if I could make the move past Tom. We're going to go back for the switchback. We're going to see if we can do him, out drag him on the exit. The, the car, sorry, but, um, the track goes left, then right. And um, whilst we were on the outside to the start, we were on the inside. We just tangled there. Our, our wheels just got together. And Alex Van Geen does the pair of us. But actually, he's, get, he's very, very narrow on the exit and, uh, and doesn't defend. I don't think he realised I was quite there. So we're going to go back up the inside. We're going to do Alex on the brakes. I can see Alex shaking his head in frustration as we go, um, as we go narrow. Uh, in order to get past us, Alex had to um, take, take a really, really tight line. 
um, and uh, and I was actually able to uh, uh, to get the better run, even though uh, Tom and I just connected ever so slightly uh, at the apex of the of the bootleg of the dog leg. Is it bootleg or dog leg? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. But a fierce battle, really, really enjoyable uh, battle, and and I really hope it comes it comes across that the uh, the, the racing is really really intense. I know there's been a few uh, moments of contact that you would have seen, particularly on the exit of turn one. But generally speaking, the uh, the, the racing is very very fair here, um, and uh, uh, we're we're going to cross the line. Unfortunately, um, we uh, we ran out of laps. Uh, but but really really great um, race. We're gonna have some lunch now. Here you are. Here's two middle-aged men enjoying um, a, uh, a, a, a wrap. I've gone for the uh, taking my face to the table there for that technique. Um, and now after lunch, we're starting um, heat three in position number six. Now um, we're on the outside this time. Not really the place to be. Not the place that you want to be. Um, we've got Matthew Roberts on the outside. And have a look at this. He does a great job, breaks really, really late and gets a slingshot all the way around the outside. So a uh, cracking bit of driving there. And uh, yeah, well, well done to him. We've got someone on our right hand side and uh, we actually go up one position. So uh, really not a bad uh, start considering the outside line is, is such a, a nightmare. So we've got Lee Jones in the lead, Matthew Roberts, George Massey and Tom Purchase. And we know that Tom Purchase is a fierce competitor. He's not just going to wave us by. Uh, we're going to need to to use absolutely everything uh, that, uh, in our armory to try and get past him. And we've just hit the back of him there uh, ever so slightly. So that's, that's really ruined our, um, we've done him a big favour. Uh, it's really ruined our uh, our, uh, our exit and it's, it's it's given him a great uh, a great launch uh, but um, actually as they they go the, the pair in front George Massey and um, and Tom Purchase go side by side through the chicane that's really slowed the pair of them down and I'm able to uh, to make a move on Tom George Massey says let's go forward and fight for the lead so we bump draft him and we push him right into the battle for the lead uh, as the as Lee and, um, and Matt uh, Matt Roberts go uh, uh, go side by side as well, so now we're in a fight for the lead. We go up the inside of George and um, we give him some space on the exit. He's still on our left hand side. There he is. Uh, so unfortunately, that move didn't quite come off, and uh, we're going to try and go for uh, a slightly wider line. Uh, out of the, uh, the the boot slash dog leg and uh, and George just there he clips that curb that really ruins and upsets his drive so um, so a fortunate one for us unfortunate for him uh, but you can see how important um, the, the the momentum is in these cards if you hit a curb wrong um, uh, of course you do need to use the curbs in some instances but uh, but there George just hit the curb it unsettled the rear and it really ruined his, his line at the same time Matt Roberts up the inside of Lee Jones Matt's all over the grass and we make it through and we're gonna we're gonna now start fighting Lee uh, for the lead but just here boom someone hits me right in the side and unfortunately I've no idea who that was but unfortunately we lose two three positions uh, how many positions are we going to lose? We've lost one for Russell Ending. We've lost one to Tom Purchase. Uh, and uh, and uh, George Massey doesn't get through. But that was a really unfortunate one. We, we know, don't we, how difficult it is to overtake. Uh, we had done Matthew Roberts um, into the chicane there. That was a really nice move. Unfortunately, uh, we got a big hit and it really sent us wide and cost us loads and loads of time um, and, uh, and, and two positions. We are still actually fighting for the lead, which is uh, it's, it's got to be good news, hasn't it? But, uh, but we were, uh, yeah, we're, we're fighting down in fifth place now rather than the second place that we, we were. Russell Endine, oh, by the way, there's a tradition that I, uh, I, I absolutely muller people's names in these videos. Uh, Russell, I hope Endine is your actual name. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's not, if you're watching. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so, so Dan, Dan in fifth position, but importantly, um, we're all kind of still nose to tail and anything can happen. Just as I've gone from second to fifth, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not to say that that couldn't happen to someone else or, or I couldn't benefit from a bit of good luck. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, how, long, how long have we got left? We've got four minutes left 
in this heat. Tom Purchase going defensive. Can we do him around the outside? No, we can't. We know that Tom is uh, a, a, a late breaker. You have to get up very early in the morning to outdo him on the breaks. Uh, so we're going to go for the better exit again. That one has been working quite nicely, but I can see there that Tom already has um, a, a decent enough exit. He doesn't make a mess of things. So we're just going to try and, um, and bump draft him along, make sure that we don't lose uh, too much time to Russell and Lee ahead. Uh, Matt Roberts is already beginning to gap uh, the, the the next four of us who, uh, yeah, because we're fighting, we're, we're all yeah, instantly starting to lose lap time. Um, yeah, it's really costly if you... Um, if you fight hard and, and you're offline all the time, uh, it is going to be quite costly. Yes, we are getting some good tow, as we're about to see. Um, you know, the, you know edg edging closer, 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 closer. But of course, um, our line into these corners is going to be compromised. Um, we've got a good exit there. Um, have a little look up the inside at Tom, but he's going to cover it off. So uh, we force him narrow. And can we make it on the exit? We force him to go narrow there by, by um, dummying up the inside. We hit that curb very hard um, on the, on the right-hand side. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make it. Again, because Russell and Lee are having a good fight of their own, uh, we haven't um, lost too much time, which, is, uh, which has got to be good news. And, um, and Lee and Tom almost getting together there. Uh, Lee a little bit wide on, um, on the exit. Uh, Really, only one uh, one way through the uh, the boot slash dog leg, uh, the uh, the classic Mango Motorsport Tom Angie inability to remember names or uh, names of corners. Two minutes thirty seconds left. What can we do? We're trying inside, outside. What can we do? It's an it's a, it's an amazing battle, isn't it? You really can't think about anything. You can't think about work if you're lucky enough to have a job. Yeah, you can't think about stress. Can't think about anything other than what you're doing. We get a good run out of the chicane again. We're going to bump draft Tom along. Make sure that we're at least in the fight as uh, we enter the, the probably what is going to be the last couple of laps uh, of this heat. We're still in fifth position. You can't see it at the moment, but there is now a bit of a gap behind. We go for the inside line, but Tom moves over to defend, and we can't quite uh, get up the inside. Tom's still there. He's on our left-hand side. Um, he goes hot into the bootleg, and that's going to uh, interfere with hit the cleanliness of his line on the exit. So right now we're going to be right underneath his rear bumper. We're going to have some slipstream, slipstream again. We're going to have to go to the outside and we're going to try all the way around the outside. Doesn't quite work out for us though. Um, so unfortunate one that one and we have lost a cart length there, haven't we? Um, what can we do? What can we do? It's going to be very, very difficult uh, to, uh, to, to get past. If we can do anything at all, it's got to happen soon. Um, but we have lost a little bit of time now, haven't we? And Tom's lost just a little bit of time uh, to uh, to Lee ahead as well. I would say we probably have two more laps remaining. We hit that curb pretty hard. That's a horrible curb, that one. Uh, but uh, you know, you, you, if you want to take that corner flat out, you, you have to use it really. Um, into the boot dog leg. Um, can we be a little bit? Karma, can we be a bit, little bit cleaner this, this time? Yes, we can. We've got good drive and we get the cart straightened earlier than Tom ahead of us. So we're in the slipstream, in the slipstream. We're getting a little bit of Lee slipstream here as well now, but again, Tom just gets to the apex first and we can't do it. But now we're going to try up the inside. Uh, can we do it? No, no, we can't. Uh, it's really not a huge breaking point, but Tom hits that curb quite hard. You see, just like Alex did in the final heat, in, in the previous heat, um, uh, he, he hits that curb hard and it ruins his line. Um, we're going to go all the way around the outside and that is job done. Uh, we managed to force the mistake from Tom Purchase there. So uh, that is job done. Um, we've probably only got the, the remainder of this lap and one more lap. So we're in fourth position. You can see now that, uh, that the top four are a little bit more strung out, certainly than, uh, than we were. But as we round this corner, I think that we're going to see the final lap board. And indeed we do. There it is, final lap in the top left-hand corner. Uh, we're going semi-defensive. So obviously Tom Purchase is still there. We're now going to be pulling him along. Um, he's going to be getting some of our toe. And, uh, and Lee Jones just looking over his shoulder, making sure um, as, as we're, again, semi-defensive. We do get a good, uh, good, good cornering speed, though, don't we, through... Uh, 
uh, through hairpin number one. We're, uh, as, as Lee goes defensive again, can we go around the outside? No, we can't. There's a cart off uh, on the left-hand side there. Lee very sensibly going defensive again. And uh, are we going to be able to do anything? He's very likely to go defensive there. I'm actually following him and going defensive because I know that Tom Purchase is right behind. Um, and I'd really rather not lose a position. There's only one line through the dog leg. We can try and go um, very, very narrow. Just a slight bit of contact there um, with Lee um, as, uh, as he turns in. But unfortunately, that's going to be it. Um, that's fourth place. Um, so uh, again, really, really great battling. Um, really, really uh, engaging. Um, probably could, or I might, might have gone a, a little bit better in that one, but uh, it is what it is, you know, if we hadn't had that contact down at the, uh, the left-hander. So we're starting the final in P5. Again, we've got Andy Hicks right ahead of us. We've got Lee Jones on our left-hand side. We've got Russell Endine um, starting on pole. He's done a great job. And Brad Philpott starting on the left-hand side. Um, so we're starting on the inside. That's always going to be good, isn't it? And we go from P5... And by virtue of being on the inside, we go all the way up to P3 straight away. Brad Philpott's behind us. Um, he has a look up the inside. We're going to give him some space on the inside, but hold the, uh, the, the high ground around the outside. Andy Hicks, number 28, goes all the way around the outside of Russell Endine. And watch this. Oh, we get one hit there, and then a secondary hit there. That's not Brad Philpott's fault, by the way, I should, I should add. Um, Brad was getting, being loaded uh, by the driver behind, who was being loaded by the driver behind. It's worked out very nicely for Matt Roberts, who's ahead of us in the 53, though. He's gone from uh, something like 4, 5, 6, or, or something, um, now up into uh, P3. We've got some great um, drive and... Uh, just there, we made um, a, a real effort uh, to, to avoid contact. We, we kind of made a decision a little bit too late to, uh, um, that, that, that we weren't going to get up the inside. Uh, we had a good run, didn't we? But, uh, but uh, we weren't close enough. And um, I was literally all the way over on the stops. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, the, the steering was, uh, was as far over to the left as we could possibly go. We didn't make contact though. Um, we, uh, we, as you can see that Matt uh, uh, ahead of us, Matthew, um, didn't know how close we had come to absolute and utter oblivion. Um, but as we round um, the, the final corner, um, we're going to have a look backwards actually to see uh, Lee Jones is behind us, but we've got a little bit of space. Um, as we round the final corner, we do actually get given a contact warning for, uh, well, for what, uh, what it was, I've no idea. Um, I was getting shoved off really, really wide in the hairpin um, and we didn't make contact in, um, in, in, uh, in chicane number one. So either it's a, a mistaken, uh, a case of mistaken identity um, or the marshal thought that I'd made some contact with the back of uh, Matthew Roberts. Not really sure what it was, but uh, but I'm, I'm pretty clear looking back at this that either I was a victim of, uh, of some contact or uh, or it was uh, just a, a, a slight mistake on the part of the marshal. But it is just a warning though. It's not, uh, you know, we, we haven't got a penalty or anything. So it is um, all to play for now. And Andy Hicks has made a great start. He is beginning um, to stretch his legs. And behind him, Russ Lending um, and uh, Matthew Roberts and myself are now um, in a, a, a mega battle for second position. At this point now, Lee, um, Lee Jones is behind us. We can have a look at him. Uh, uh, Lee Jones is behind us. But, uh, but Matt goes for the move up the inside of Russell. Slight bit of contact there. Uh, they're side by side. And who are we going to push through? We're going to push Russell through because he's got the inside line. We're having a look at Matt. And there it is. We've made it up to P3 by just having a look at, and, and seeing who's got the inside line, um, we're up into P3. So that's, uh, that's, that's good news for us. Can we do anything about Russell? He's been really, really quick all day. Uh, and, uh, and, and there's Matt, he's letting us know that we're still there. And just here, you see, just here, we make a bad mistake. It's the second bad mistake that we've made that round there. Um, and as we switch to the front view, we see that we are, uh, we had to climb all over the curb and we lost loads of momentum. But um, I just got wide in the, in the dog leg there. I, there was no contact, I wasn't pushed wide. It was a mistake entirely of my own making. 
uh, you know, so uh, so can't can't blame anyone else for that one. Uh, but uh, but Matt Roberts has had a great uh, a great uh, end to the last lap and a, and a great beginning to this one because he's gone uh, two positions up into second position now, um, and I've got to regather my thoughts and see what I can do to get back uh, into into the fight. See if I can get back into P2. Uh, Russell in the 16 just ahead of us. Uh, is uh, yeah, it's beginning to go defensive a little bit, and you can see that um, actually on this camera it looks like we're much further apart than than we are. Perhaps not uh, myself, Russell, and and Matt at this stage, but uh, it looks like Andy Hicks has, has disappeared off the road. He's actually a little bit closer uh, than than this camera angle might suggest. But just here we get a great drive um, off the inside line, and um, we're going to give Russell some space, go all the way around the outside, which turns into the inside for the second part of uh, the uh, the chicane there and um, I'm really pleased with that move that's job done he's still there he's having a little think about us um, and, uh, and you can see that um, there's uh, there's Brad and Lee uh, behind us so the battle for second is a battle it's a three-way battle um, the battle for fourth at the moment I believe is a two-way battle and the battle up ahead is between Andy Hicks and Andy Hicks he's only got himself to defeat at this stage so um, you know uh, if, if we can do anything at all um, we're gonna have to work together to see if we can catch him but he has he has built up quite a nice lead there hasn't he we're gonna have some outboard shots in a minute uh, to see if we can uh well, i hope we are anyway uh to see if we can um uh can have a look at how i'm sure i put some outboard shots in here maybe i'll have to have another look at that and see if we can uh see if i can put them in after doing the voiceover um, anyway, just having another look here, and, uh, and you see that Russell's just lost um, lost touch with us. I'm not sure what happened. Um, the, the, the likelihood is he, he probably made a mistake somewhere, um, but he's going to lose the toe now. Here's that outboard shot. There it is. So you can see there that that's uh, that actually oh, I've put that in the wrong place, haven't I? Ah, oh, classic. <laughs> That's it, classic. I put it in the wrong place. Um, there, um, <laughs> there, there was the outboard shot anyway, uh, um, and you can see that we're actually a little bit closer than um, uh, than, than this, uh, particularly this camera angle might suggest. Unfortunately, um, the, uh, the the SD card and, and the battery life in a camera, in a 360 camera is, uh, well, a 360 camera will drain loads of memory and loads of battery. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna see the whole, uh, uh, whole race from this view. Uh, in actual fact, we're not gonna see the, the whole way. We're gonna see 99% of this race, but we're now back in, um, uh, in, in third position. And I wanna take this moment, I think, as, as things have calmed down a little bit, and we're just sat in Matthew's slipstream. Again, like I said, we will, we will switch camera angle. Um, in, in a moment and we'll see that we're actually a little bit closer to him than this camera might suggest. Uh, definitely getting some slipstream here. Um, th this, um, th obviously round one here at Fullbeck of the GX UK 2024 Senior uh, Championship. Um, uh, my expectations coming into this was that I thought I, thought I was going to be a, a very, very average um, competitor. There we are, we're, we're, we're uh, onto the front nose cone now. Um, I thought I was going to be very, very average. Um, and uh, you know, the, this is this is really only my my third race um, in, in owner uh, driving. Um, still learning about the setup. Uh, but if I think back to my first run out in Hooton Park uh, in, uh, in in one of these machines, I um, I set up the cart absolutely completely wrong. You know, I know that there are some people who say, oh, "Well, you know, you go go in the setup direction that you want." Um, I mean, you know, what I did was wrong. I was trying to, uh, I wanted like the, the rear wheel to cock um, and um, I wanted, I thought I was going to achieve that by softening the front as much as possible. Um, completely the wrong setup. Um, and uh, and yeah, touch, trying to take on um, an awful lot of, of new knowledge, new information. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I was, I mean, I think I finished um, in the final um, in, in, uh, in Hooten. I think I finished P six on the road and then p5 uh, because someone ahead of me got a penalty um so uh, but, but that was um in a field um i can't remember how many people were in that field it was a much much smaller field this championship has exploded in popularity we had 21 entries for this so we're now sat in p3 out of 21 entries um and um yeah so so really really pleased with um with the the 
you know, the, the step forward in particularly knowledge, knowledge of how to set up the carts, um, pace as well. I've really had to change my driving style. I'm used to Club 100 and, and Daytona two strokes um, where you have a little bit more, well, quite a lot more power actually, certainly a lot more power, about 22 horsepower um, and, um, and perhaps slightly less grip. So a higher power, lower grip uh, is, is, is what I've been used to. I'm suddenly going to uh, low power, high grip and, um, and I've had to change my driving style. So I've had to learn a lot. I've had to change my driving style. And um, you know, my, my expectations for, for this championship and this weekend were actually pretty low, um, considering that, that there are guys with, with so much better knowledge than me, uh, hard won knowledge, but guys like Andy Hicks um, and, and Brad Philpot, uh, you know, they, they've spent so much time and effort learning, uh, learning these carts and, and, and understanding them. And uh, you know, huge congratulations to them for the, the knowledge that they've won. Uh, so you know, like I said, I wasn't expecting to be anywhere near them, but in uh, in heat one, um, I was able to stick with them. Uh, perhaps not consistent. I'm still making a few too many mistakes. Uh, any kind of slide in these carts really punishes you. So I need to iron out the mistakes. But like I said, in, in heat one, I did manage to get the fastest lap time. So really pleased with that, and also in this uh, in this lap in in this um, uh, final, the top four: um, Andy, uh, Matt uh, in front of us, myself, and then Brad uh, behind. Brad got the fastest lap, but we were all within hundredths of a second of each other. Um, so top four, really really close on pace. Really really delighted. It's going to, I hope, make for an amazing uh, season. So uh, Andy Hicks over the line, Matthew Roberts and myself um, in second and third, separated by 0.7 of a second. Brad Philport in fourth, Russell Endeen fifth, Tom Stalker sixth, Alex Van Geen, Tom Purchase, Lee Jones, Rich Melton Baxter um, in uh, round off the top 10. Uh, then we've got a little, um, uh, 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 wait for uh, Ethan Hall, Rupert Rickson, Tom Butler, Simon Fuller, Tyler Nicholson, uh, Danny Patrick, George Massey, uh, and then um, a few others. Uh, but thanks ever so much for watching and see you on the next one.